What's up guys, the May Patreon rewards are now available. Cyclonic Rift, Jace the Mind Sculptor, and Avison Angel of Hope are all available through the end of the month. If you'd like to support our channel and pick up these sweet proxies, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves or by clicking the link in the description below. What's going on guys? Welcome to another gameplay video. Today, uh, we're going to be trying out Is It Aggro? So, uh, Sprite Dragon is really the card that kind of made me want to play this. Um, it's a new card from Akoria, 1-1 one, one, uh, for 2 with Flying and Haste. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Um, obviously, this lends itself very, very well to like a Spells Matters list. Uh, one that we can utilize a lot of really, really cheap stuff. Hopefully buff this guy up and then just keep swinging him for a lot of damage. Uh, I think there's a common mistake with this card, uh, at least that I have seen. Um, and that's to throw this into like an Arclight Phoenix deck. Uh, I know Arclight Phoenix had a bit of a resurgence and just that it's a really popular card and it was really cool to see it kind of, you know, come back a little bit. We tried it out in a couple different iterations as well. Don't think it's like the right deck right now, to be honest, but, um, I, I think there is a misconception that like sometimes a lot of people just kind of assume, well, this is a really good aggro card, uh, in like a Spells Matters list, which it is. I'll throw it into Phoenix. Well... I don't think that's the right place for it. Now, that's just my personal opinion, so please, you know, disregard if you've found other uh, other means to say otherwise. But, um, in my opinion, I think that this kind of deserves its own deck, not necessarily a deck focused on a lot of draw and discard. Um, I think this can focus a lot on draw, but I think we need a few other pieces. And some of those are things like Unsummon, for instance. This is not a card that I would probably put in an Arclight Phoenix deck. Um, the only reason being it doesn't do that much in an Arclight Phoenix deck. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, it bounces a card, but, you know, you're going to have a lot of Phoenixes anyway. You don't care if they die, really. You get to bring them back every time. So, for me, uh, there's a little bit of a different deck configuration. Now, the reason Unsummon, I think, is so good in this deck, uh, a lot of times, you know, we're going to be swinging in with a giant Sprite Dragon. Uh, at least that's the idea. It'd be great to be able to say, okay, well, you've got one flyer or one reach creature on the field. Maybe you've got a Cavalier of Thorns or something like that. Obviously, it's not an ideal thing to have to bounce a Cavalier of Thorns, but for one mana, we get to bounce that back to your hand. You lose your blocker for the Sprite Dragon, and uh, not only that, but it puts the counter on the Sprite Dragon, so then we can keep attacking in uh, for even more damage. So we've got a lot of stuff like this. We've got Ops here as a very cheap way to cantrip through our deck uh, and pump this up. We've got three Shocks, uh, not the full four. I think in the right matchup, it's an amazing card, obviously like Mono Red, for instance. But in a lot of cases, Shock just gets outpowered by some stuff. So I'm not super interested in running the full four. We do have a couple Augur of Bolas here as well to kind of clog up the board on the on the low end uh, and on the ground, just because these block a lot of things very, very efficiently um, and require like, you know, a Scorching Dragonfire or something to kill it a little bit more than just a shock. Uh, they can either block and shock it or, you know, do something like that. Uh, it also just helps us get to, you know, the cards that matter. Uh, Sprite Dragon, we've already talked about two Essence Scatter here. Uh, on best of one, guys, I am finding Essence Scatter to be pretty amazing. Uh, it's very often you're up against creature decks, obviously. Lurus, Sacrifice decks, all that kind of stuff. Just being able to counter something is pretty solid. Uh, now, this does mean you have to leave up mana like on every turn, but you'll notice most, not all, but most uh, of our, our uh, spells here are all instants. Now, with the exception of like Lava Coil and Beacon Bolt here. So... It's really not that difficult for us to do. Radical Idea, a great way to draw a couple cards. Uh, Lava Coil, a way to deal with some more powerful creatures as well as exiling them. Uh, Scorching Dragonfire does the same thing, but this also only does three damage, but it hits Planeswalkers, which is really, really important. Uh, two of Improbable Alliance. This is just kind of as an extra added kind of thing. Uh, if we find ourselves in a position where we need a lot of blockers or, you know, we're finding that they're just killing off one for one our Sprite Dragons. This is a way to kind of go wide. Uh, we do have Castle Embreath in here, so we can kind of pump all these guys up if we would like to and really, really punch in for some damage. Uh, Beacon Bolt, not uh, a card that you want to see all the time, if I'm honest. Uh, it only hits creatures, but it can hit really, really strong stuff. 
assuming you have cantrip through your deck and use some of these cheaper spells. So uh, not only that, but it also has jump starts, so you can actually use it multiple times, hence only having two of them. Uh, but I do like to you know, run a couple of these just to have the insurance to say, yeah, we can probably kill whatever we need to uh, when we need to. Uh, Crackling Drake, a card all the way back from Guilds of Ravnica, but a really sweet card. Uh, we saw this in the Phoenix decks, which does make sense, I think, there. This just gives another win condition. <clears throat> Obviously, we're going to have a lot of instants and sorceries in our graveyard. This just gives us another opportunity to kind of punch through for some damage. Kind of acts as like an extra few copies of the Sprite Dragon, if you think of it that way. Uh, Chemister's Insight here is a two of as well, just to draw a couple extra cards, trigger the Improbable Alliance, but also put counters here uh, and help with all this stuff. Now, uh, as far as lands go, we're running 23. Uh, you know, we cap out at four. I don't necessarily think we need the full 24. There's a bit of an experimental list. Uh, I pulled a list and it was really kind of in shambles in my opinion. So I thought I would try and <clears throat> alter it myself and see where we got. Uh, and this is kind of what I landed on. So seven and seven on the island and mountain split. Uh, we're pretty even throughout the entire deck, to be honest. Uh, and so seven and seven seems like the right count to me. One castle Embrith and one castle Vantress just give us those scry or pump up in those situations where we have to go wide. Uh, four steam vents and then three temple of epiphany. Didn't want to go for the full four. We are an aggro deck. Um, we can pick and choose the time that we want to play these, but we really don't want to be, you know, leaving them off uh, curve if we can help it. So that's kind of where we're at. I'm interested to try this out. Uh, I... I've seen a few is it aggro lists, um, and but to be honest, I haven't seen very many, and I'm sure it's I mean for good reason. I I I don't know how high my hopes are for this list to do very very well, but I want to give it a shot. I think Sprite Dragon in particular can make it very very possible. So you know why not? The whole the whole point of these like gameplay series uh, kind of things is to test stuff out. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, this is definitely a keep. In this case, we can lead on the temple because, you know, we're not going to unsummon on turn one, most likely. Uh, but turn two, we do get the sprite dragon down turn three, uh, auger and unsummon both. Uh, so that's actually quite good for us. I'm going to keep the opt. <clears throat> not the most exciting thing, but it does pump up these. So let's go ahead and get this down. Jeskai, huh? You know what I haven't seen in quite a while is Jeskai Winota. Maybe this is Jeskai Winota. That'd be cool. Uh, let's throw this out. Let's throw this out. That's fine. Uh, and we'll go ahead and opt here just to throw the counter here. Um, I think I'm actually going to keep that. Uh, we do kind of want our fourth land, so I'm, I'm happy to keep that here. <clears throat> so we just kind of have to hope they don't have a way to deal with this um and they very well might usually there's probably some kind of maybe a sweeper or something like that in there all right hmm let's play this first uh huh what do we want? What do we want? I'm going to take the shock. I don't know if that's 100% correct. Um, I'm also going to try and play out this improbable alliance. This will probably get countered. Maybe not. Okay. Uh, so maybe they are looking to deal with this. In which case, I'm glad I went for the improbable alliance, to be honest. Um, though we did not get... I did not take the uh, radical idea. Looks like this is a Winona deck. That's cool. I'm in. I like it, I like it. Uh, this is going to be a bit of a rough turn then if they do have Winota. Which they do. <clears throat> yep. I'm kind of glad I kept the shock though so I can deal with one of these guys. Um, and that's not really, you know. As long as they don't get an agent, we're okay. Please no agent. Please no agent. Oh, good. Alright, there we go. <laughs> Um, that was just unlucky on their end. Uh, thankfully, we could kill this and shock the other ones, so they would not have gotten any more Winota triggers. So, you know, that kind of worked out. I think that was just a subject of the matchup, though. We'll uh, we'll jump into game two. Um, 
I don't know, that felt pretty good though, to be honest. We had like a good setup, just in general, and that did not take but a few turns to get there. So that, you know, that was nice. We'll see what we can do. Ugh. I would absolutely love this if one of these was blue, but no. Um, I don't like this either, but unfortunately we're going to have to keep it. Uh, let's put the auger on the bottom. They're playing an Amori deck. Yeah. Don't love this. Uh, this is where these temples really do not work out. Uh, is, you know, obviously we don't want to have too many of these. Uh, as much as I would love to keep that, I think we need land. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to ship that to the bottom. To the bottom. All right. Yep. Unfortunately, didn't get a land there. Still no land. That's not good. Um, and we'll pass here. We do get to leave up shock, but my assumption is they might have like a paradise druid. Oh, okay. Is this just um, either Simic or Sultai kind of mutate? All right, let's throw that out there. Let's throw the Sprite Dragon out. And we'll just go ahead and attack here. <clears throat> Good news is if we bounce something that they just continuously mutate on, we get at least a little extra value. Um, yep. Uh, if we bounce this, by the way, this just, I believe, lands on the battlefield, so I'd rather wait for it to actually resolve. Mm -hmm. uh, let's be somewhat efficient and do this here. Um, the only reason I'm doing this now is because we're, we're a little bit tight on mana, um, and we don't know if we're drawing another land. It would be very, it would make quite a lot of sense to throw this out first, but, um, we're going to try this. Uh, let's throw out another dragon. I'm going to go ahead and shock them, um, only because they're going to have very little interaction and that boosts up this beacon bolt just a little bit. That may be incorrect. That may be a bit aggressive, um, but we'll see. <clears throat> yep, same play as last time. Makes sense. But that did set them back at least a turn. Um, and the reason I'm being so aggressive with the shocks is that we sort of expected them to replay this and then mutate this onto it. So, like, shock isn't doing anything, unfortunately, against them um, at the moment, at least. So... It, you know, I think that makes the most sense. Uh, let's go ahead and swing in and we'll pass. Uh, unfortunately, these do not kill this yet. Um, so, have to wait and see what we draw. But, um, depending on what we draw, well, really, even without drawing anything, we could technically win next turn. It just kind of depends on what they play here. So, we'll see. It's a good one. Is a very good one. Uh, however, that does have reach. Okay. Woo, that is a good board. That's the cool part about these uh, mutate decks is that they can pull stuff like that off. Um, hmm. Hmm, hmm. So we kind of have to do that. Okay. I actually don't think we had won there, but sure. I'll take it. Um, <laughs> works for me. All right. Let's jump into game three. Uh, so far, so good with this deck. Sorry for the frame rate drop, guys. It's network issues. We've talked about it before. All right. Let's jump in. I'm liking this deck, though. Feels pretty good. I like trying out new decks like this. Like, this isn't one that I've really seen a ton of. Um, ugh. Might have some mana issues here. Um, yeah, I don't think we can keep this. I think we do have to ship it back. Uh, this is a very good, like, kind of reactive hand, though. And maybe it's actually okay, because we are against Luris. Hmm. The only reason I'm saying that is because we do have ways to deal with, you know, whatever they decide to do. 
And if we do draw a blue land, we're great because we do have Sprite Dragon. But that's a big if. I mean, this is this would be a very risky keep. I'm going to try it. This is probably incorrect, 100%. Just going to go ahead and say that now. But um, it looks like it's the cycling deck. Oh, oh the payoff. We are going to lean on red here so we can shock. Um, my assumption is they're going to start... Make, they might play like a Flourishing Fox or a Stinger or something this turn, so I'd like to be able to just shock it right away. Um, and then we can be more proactive with these sprite dra or the Sprite Dragon here. And this is what I'm talking about. Alright, get rid of that. Uh, play Blue, play Sprite Dragon, and let's go. Alright. Uh, next turn, we get Scorching Dragonfire plus Opt. And we're gonna 100% Dragonfire that. <laughs> um, do that. We'll go ahead and Opt here. Uh, yeah, I think I'm actually okay with keeping that. Um, and we'll swing in. Uh, so now we've got Unsummon if they do like a Flourishing Fox kind of thing and really go for it. Uh, we've got Crackling Drake as a second, you know, kind of win condition. And then we have Lava Coil, which is 100% going to be dealing with this Stinger. Uh, kind of glad we hit the Life Gain, the Dranath Healer, early. Uh, just so we could get rid of, you know, any Life Gain opportunity there. Okay. Let's do this. I'm just pumping this guy up as much as possible here. Um, another Sprite Dragon. Yeah. Why not? Um, go ahead and attack in. The only thing that I'm really worried about is Zenith Flare. Um, Zenith Flare is just way too good. That card is ridiculous. Okay, but they didn't have anything to drop there before they cycled, which is a very good sign. Um... Yep. <laughs> Apparently they're still not getting anything. Um, yep. I'm not 100% sure if I go for Crackling Drake. I think I go for Crackling Drake, right? Let's do this. I'm going to draw the card first. Okay. Whoops. Ooh, almost click no attacks. That could have been bad. Okay, now we've got two decisive threats that could win the game for us. And, um, you know, they've got a lot of cyclers, so they may Zenith Flare, which is going to be bad. But that's going to take up four of their total of six mana. So, you know, that's okay. Uh, we've also got Chemister's Insight to help, you know, draw some more stuff. Looks like they do have the Zenith Flare. Makes sense. Um, but I'm glad we played out the Crackling Drake there. Uh, let's Sprite Dragon. We're going to unsummon this. Get a counter here. And we're going to attack in. And now once again, we're in pretty good territory. They can replay this. We can unsummon it. Doesn't really matter too much. Uh, Deafening Clarion. Okay. Do they have another one? <laughs> no, they don't. Um, there it is. Guys, we got three wins so far with this Is It deck. Uh, I'm loving it. This Is It aggro deck feels pretty solid. It's very proactive. It's more proactive than I thought it would be. Uh, now, we haven't had anything like an Essence Scatter Hand where we feel we need to leave up some mana. Um, however, you know, this is actually a really good testament. Against creature decks, you're able to kind of deal with the early game really, really easily with the Shocks, the Dragon Fires, the Lava Coils. Uh, and then unsummon anything that you can't already deal with. So, like, that felt pretty good. I'm not going to lie. We're going to obviously give this a, a second video, so we'll do uh, three more games in the second one. Highly encourage you to check that one out. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. Please check out our Patreon as well. This month we have got some amazing proxies uh, as the rewards. We are also, uh, if you followed us on Instagram, we've also posted to our story a couple times 
kind of working on something a little bit new, uh, something kind of all of our all our own. Uh, it's some kind of alternative artwork for lands and things like that that we're really really excited about. It took a lot of work, uh, a lot of time uh, to make those, but really really excited about it. They are like ma made by uh, us. I mean, I, I took the time and kind of made those, so please do check that out. Uh, we'll probably be posting on those very, very soon. So that way you can kind of see them uh, and we'll have them on the website and everything as well. We also have our, our uh, Aquaria giveaway. So if you're not already entered, please make sure you enter. Uh, you can win a free Aquaria bundle. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate all the support lately. It means a lot, but uh, I will see you in the next gameplay video. Thanks guys.